Hello, I'm Carlos Coronado, I'm a game developer and in this tutorial I'm going to show you probably the most underrated tool in Unreal Engine which is the Vertex Paint. It's literally overwhelming what you can do with it but most of people don't even know about it so yeah that's what we're going to do today. Okay so what we're going to do first is I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to assign this new material to name it and I'm going to assign it to this plane here. It's important that in order to vertex paint to work better you need some test selection. Oops, let me hide the skybox so you can see it clear. So this is the default Unreal Engine box. So this is a tessellated plane and this is a non tessellated plane. We'll see why it doesn't work here but it, it can still work but it just works better here. Okay, now I have my new material. I'm going to put a texture on it and I have plenty of textures here. I'm just going to use sand one for base color and I'm just going to do the zero to specular. Okay. So as you can see the sun is really big so I'm also going to make it smaller according to the palm and I'm just going to texture coordinate. Okay I'm going to put three and three and now my sand is styling. Okay, so as you can see, this is kind of generic looking, like it's it's boring to look at. So Vertex Paint is actually great, it's a great tool to add variation it, and it works awesome in mobile and consoles too, so that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do now is create my first Vertex Paint lerp between two textures and for that we need a linear interpolate and I'm going to put this here. And this connect this here and I have this other texture of sun and I'm just going to connect here and I'm just going to connect that here so that one tiles too. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is put the red channel, not this one, but the red channel in the alpha of the lerp. You'll see what's happening now. Well it didn't happen nothing, right? But if we take a look here and we go to the brush and let me please expand this. Now, if I select this plane, you'll see that the the literally the wireframe dots, the vertex, appear. That's why it's called vertex paint. And now I can paint black or white into this dot. So let's see what happens when I paint. I paint with a control, and now the second texture appear. And if I paint with a control shift down it disappears and this way I can create an interpolation between the texture that's in reality I'm not painting the texture what I'm doing is creating a mask that we can visualize here in the color view mode I'm creating a mask between the red channel between those two textures but to be honest it's not really good looking because you know it's kind of bland or not do that's mainly because the color variation between this texture and this texture is really high. This one is reddish and is, you know, like more darker than this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Photoshop and quickly edit this texture so the colors match. So let's see. To edit that texture, there's actually a really useful tool in Vertex Paint, which is Image, Adjustments, Match Color. Now this is magic right here because you'll see now in Source I'm going to select Soil Sand 1 and as soon as I select it, boom, it automatically changes and I have a fade value that I, I can use, right? But it automatically changes the colors of these textures to match the color of the chosen texture, which in my case was this one. I'm just going to save it and let's see what happens when it loads it. Boom. Amazing. Now it has the right amount of color variation. So, And what's really cool about Vertex Paint is that I have a strength value for my brush and I can just like boop, 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 only paint a little bit here a little bit there it's really subtle but it's really adding up for my texture and I create I can create interpolations between both etc sometimes you don't want the interpolation to be that soft but as you can see now I'm trying kind of trying to hide the tiling be, be, without Actually, 
pouring too much of the second texture like right here it's kind of dull and bland and we'll go to here later it's too soft but here it it just works okay so what if i want to do a vertex paint between another texture what if i want to do let's say a vertex paint with three or four or even five textures just to let you know that the amount of vertex paint interpolations you can do is actually five textures so you can do no it's the correct way to say this you can only do five interpolations and that's why we're using each channel separately so it's one two three four interpolation and of course the last one is between two so okay let's let's actually build that let's actually add another texture to see how how we can make an interpolation so what we do is really simple instead of lerping between two textures now we're going to lerp between the result of this lerp and yep you guessed it a third texture which i now also go into tile okay and i'm going to layer between this and to the alpha what do i do this one again no this will be wrong we need to use now another channel that's why we need the maximum amount it's it's five okay i'm going to save and know what's going to happen as you can see now i have my third texture and my first texture but what is the second texture if i paint white white or black right it doesn't appear that's because Vexer vertex paint is actually painting for and looking for the channel so what i have to do is in order to get it this one to appear i need to paint it just because white is one 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 so i just need to paint one zero zero and now i'm going to get my first texture back. see here second texture sorry first texture third texture and now i can paint between all all the textures so i'm really lazy i'm really really lazy and in or what i actually do is this one white color this one and i put here black and this one Red. and I just name it and when I'm painting with a vertex paint shader I just go here and say okay I want to paint this texture I need that one alright so this is the basics of vertex paint let's actually see what happens when the when it's not tessellated the environment I'm painting in so I'm going to return really quickly grab the material and put the material to this plane which it was not tessellated right and I'm just going to try to to paint some vertex paint textures so what you will see is that hey it's, it's not working why it's not working well it's not working because there is not that many vertex to paint it's only four of them so it's like ah uh, uh, it kind of works if you paint one but it's you don't have that much control it can work sometimes but just take into consideration you still need to set it if you want to vertex paint so for example, another example, let's, let's see why vertex paint is fucking awesome. You can hide, you can hide tiling really quickly with vertex paint. If we take a look at this dirty wall, you can really notice the tiling really, really quickly. But on the other hand, if we take a look at this one, it's so shiny and new that it's boring and uninteresting. So what I can actually do is if I go here let me see it's here to create this texture the only thing i did was grab this texture all the texture i'm using are i'm from, from texture.com and the only thing i did was grab another texture put it on top of the old one and then i set levels Control l shortcut for you there and straight to the black straight to the white and actually let's not put it that black back here I just want the whites. Why? Because now I multiply and the whites are now invisible. So that's how I did that texture. Alright? So let's let's see why vertex pain is is great. I'm going to open this material here and I'm just going to L shortcut click and now the clean texture here, here, 
here an alpha vertex pain right so now I can hide the tiling with the vertex pane because I can paint let me oh, that's it I can paint the texture the other texture only what I wanted let me put the strength down and I can say here a little bit here here too this one to the bottom and now it's still old it's it still has the leaking effect but it's not tiling and boring now it's perfect and I have so much control over it and to be honest there are not that many vertex here if you take a look at it it's really 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 simple right okay now with the last example which is my favorite one and probably this is the thing that most folks don't know about vertex pain and why a lot of, of devs don't use it so if, as you can see for these kind of textures that are really contrast between each other the you know the fade it's uh, really generic it's really dull actually I'm just going to m make it even worse because I'm going to change the second texture for even a worse one so you can notice I'm going to use this grass here take a look at this now uh, you see that how how it's uh, it's not really realistic this because it's using half this texture and half this texture we need like like a, a proper you know like sharp edge so how do we get this sharp edge we can use some alphas for the red channel so i'm not going to bore you with mathematics but this is how you make it right here instead of this node we're going to use this and what is this it's the same node and by the way these are just a couple of constants you can use constant instead of parameters if you want right so instead of that node we can use all these right take a look at how it's connected and then i'm going to connect instead of this i'm going to connect this and i'm also going to tile this texture what is this texture? This texture is really simple to make. I just grab the one of the two textures and I use image adjustment, hue saturations. I don't want any saturation. I now control L and I have to really contrast this one. I have to really go up and here where the mountain starts more or less. So that's the texture I'm using. It's a mask. And what this is actually going to do is actually using this mask to set the vertex pane. So let's see what happens now. Take a look at the change. Boom. So much better now. Now the, 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 the patterns of the texture are so much defined. And I can paint it then really, really easy and really, really quickly too. And what it's good, uh, what it's good about parametrizing the, the mask is that I can actually go here right and I can tweak it if I want it harder or more soft uh, right, I always like something in the middle and I have this one and I can also control with this one it's like super exaggerated super exaggerated B right so that's two ways where I can control it and the difference is really really adding up just remember that if you are using this right just paint with a brush with not that much strength and if you are using more channels for the vertex paint you will need a construction of these like separated right with the another channel let's, let's actually like I didn't plan to do this but I'm actually going to do another one with a third grassy texture let's see what we have here Oops, to put it in the center sorry for that and this one goes in the new alpha and this little boy goes here okay so 
you can see I'm going to paint also red I have a blend between three textures now right and this is what's amazing about Vertex Paint that it's it it has a lot of the features of the Unreal Engine landscape, but you can use it on walls or or, or any kind of weird geometry that is not just Hapeman geometry, and that's why I I like Vertex Paint so so much. What if you want to use it with more channels? It's really easy. So imagine that we have all these textures with normal maps. How do we Vertex Paint in the normal map? What I actually do is I take all this group, control C, control B, and then I put this one into the normal channel, right? If you want to optimize, you can probably just connect this one here, but anyway, yeah. And now if I got the normal maps, which I don't for these textures, you just click here with the normal max selected, right? And you put the normals here. And now your vertex pane will work with normals. Okay, so that's that's all for today. Hope you liked the tutorial. And, uh, yeah, let's see you. Oh, the, yeah, it's really dark because I have the normals here, which doesn't make any sense. So it's it's still good, still good. <laughs> okay, so hope you liked the tutorial and see you in the next one.